Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers for Tuesday the 20th of December. That was uh, the old French carol, Oh Leave Your Sheep, um, as said by Kenneth Layton. And if you thought the tenors sounded a bit ropey, that's because I'm one of them. That's the choir at St Andrews with Castlegate uh, URC in Nottingham at our service of lessons and carols on Sunday past. With just four sleeps till Christmas. Thank you for leaving your sheep or whatever is keeping you busy uh, tonight for this brief pause for prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Because of you, righteous God, we journey to Bethlehem, trusting that you will lead us down the paths of faithfulness. For you, Child Jesus, we wait on this day of anticipation and hope in the days of doubt and worry. With you, Spirit of Advent, we serve those for whom this season is not one of joy, those whose lives are empty of family and friends. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Tom Sherman's Psalm for Tuesdays in Advent. Lord, you were favourable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I should have said Tom Schumann's choice of psalm for Tuesday in Advent. That is a Psalm 85. So we continue then in our Advent study. Sharing the Christmas Story by Sally Welch, by kind permission of the author and of um, BRF, who published this for this Advent. And tonight we do indeed reach the story of the shepherds. Luke 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child, wrapped in bands of cloth, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, perhaps my favourite chapter in the Christmas story, um, and Sally Welch's reflection um, eloquently explains why. Once upon a time, a long time ago now, two girls answered an advertisement in their local newspaper for help wanted on a sheep farm in Devon. I'm not sure which of them persuaded the other that spending time in the middle of nowhere with a load of sheep was a good idea. Each of them frequently blamed the other in the months to come. Neither of the girls came from a farming background or had any experience with livestock but it turned out they were the only ones who answered the advertisement. So, after a five-minute phone interview, they were hired and took the train to Barnstable the following weekend. The weeks that followed were among the hardest the girls had ever experienced. Both were headed for university, one to read classics, the other English. So they had spent the previous years reading and writing, skipping physical education lessons so that they could study rather than run around a wet sports pitch. They were consequently completely unprepared for the 12 hour days spent outside in all sorts of weather, carrying bags of feed and bales of hay, herding, assisting at births, docking tails, all the tasks of a thousand strong flock at lambing time. Meals were mostly taken in silence due to fatigue and uncertain temper. The girls were informed that they had been recruited from Berkshire because the farmer became so ill-tempered towards the farmhands during the season that if he employed local children he would have alienated his neighbours. Life was reduced to work, food and sleep and not enough of the last two. There were joyful moments, watching a lamb take its first faltering steps towards its mother, seeing the sun rise over green fields having been awake all night walking to work through meadows rich with grass, and times when it seemed as if a particular field was the best place to be in all the world. These went some way to compensate for the sheer challenge of it all. But all the same, there was rejoicing when the season ended and a return home beckoned. We survived, says Sally Welch. But every time I read this passage, I remember the long days, the broken nights, the lack of company and the narrowness of vision that the work of shepherding involves. I found restoration to hot baths, plentiful meals and clean laundry. The shepherds of Jesus' time would not have experienced such blessings. Living on the open hills, constantly aware of the dangers facing their livestock, this group of people weren't even respected by their fellow countrymen, but were instead counted as unclean since their occupation prevented them from following many of the rules set down in the Torah. But it is to these people that the angels bring their news of the birth of the Messiah. To these that the message of the Saviour is carried. To these the privilege of being the first to hear the heavenly throng sing out the redemption of humankind. And they respond. What a journey that must have been. In the dead of night, hurrying down the hills, doubtless herding the sheep before them, because who would leave one's entire livelihood on the mountain to be preyed upon? How would they have known in which stable to find the child, in which manger he would be lying? Did they run through the town, opening barn doors and disturbing cattle and people alike? How brave of them to risk abuse and anger in order to follow the angel's command. And then to arrive and enter the stable, and share with Mary all that had happened to them. As usual, an encounter with Christ, young as he is, transforms lives. Returning to their pastures, 
The shepherds are filled with joy, turned into evangelists as they spread the news of the birth to everyone they meet, rejoicing in the fact that it was they, the lowly, the poor, the ignored, who were chosen to bring tidings of great joy to the world. And Sally's prayer is simply this. Heavenly Father, let me never forget that your gospel is for all people. Amen. I once shared a flat with a, a medical student um, who was of farming stock himself, and that reading rings true because every year Malcolm would disappear off in lambing season um, and um, come back having spent practically every, I'd say every waking hour, because he, he, shepherds don't sleep much in lambing season, um, as she says, pretty much every hour in the, 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 the mucky and frantic business of lambing. Um, he loved it, and I think it's that that gave him an appetite to um, spend long nights um, in the frenzy of accident and emergency wards in Glasgow on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, so, the story of the shepherds rings true. And now I have queued up for you. Um, while shepherds watched their flocks by night, but I appear to have closed it. Um, so we won't have that. We will have instead um, the Carol of the Bells, the Ukrainian Christmas carol as, that I've been using throughout Advent in different versions. So let's have this version just now. This is um, a choir in Odevelas. Now singing Kirby Shaw's jazz arrangement, The Carol of the Bells. Let's come before God in a time of prayer then, and let us pray. See, you come, clarifier of our hearts, playing salvation's love song on a baritone sax, preparing the way for grace to transform our souls, holding us in your heart when we lose our way. See, you come, tender mercy, filling in poverty's potholes with grace's riches, 
tearing down cruelty capped oppression, straightening out the winding paths we make the needy walk, soothing the lonely nights of rough sleepers. See you come, eyes of grace, so in seeing the suffering around us, we might share mercy. In observing the struggles of others, we might give offerings of justice. In noticing the silence of leaders, we would cry out for hope. See, you come, God in community, holy in one, so that we might be your people of grace and justice. Amen. In our prayers of intercession, the refrain, if you'd like to join in, is hear our prayer. When I say, God of mercy, hear our prayer. At evening time, let us offer our prayers to God. Let us pray for the church, that we may be moved to pursue truth and justice. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole earth, that we may protect the beauty of creation. And Lord, knowing the new commitments that have just been made in Canada at COP15 to do just that, we pray that we might live up to that promise. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our community for those who lead us in faith and for those we serve. This Tuesday evening we think particularly of the ministers, elders and members of the United Reformed Church throughout Leicestershire and of all our ecumenical partners in that county. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer from illness, oppression or despair. Lord, at a time where winter ailments seem on the increase, but also COVID appears to be resurging amongst us, we pray for all those who are suffering ailments and serious illnesses and ongoing conditions, whatever they may be as well as those who care for them. Tonight we think especially of the Reverend Jenny Mills recovering from her hospital stay. We pray with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie in hospital. For the Reverend Derek Hopkins home from hospital facing continuing health issues. With the Reverend Solomon and Paulina R. E. Brown for Paulina's father, Kweku. With the Reverend Samuel and Evelyn Sulungwe for Evelyn's father, Labson. For the Reverend Martin Ferris. For the Reverend Stanley Crane. For the Reverend Michael Forster and Jean Forster for the Reverend Graham Maskery and Vera Maskery and for Moynia's parish priest, Father Andy. We pray too with Liz for her great nephew Ryan, her daughter Emma and Emma's young son Leon. We pray with Prince for Cheryl, with Andy for his dad Mike and for Liz and Ruth as they continue to care for him. With Paul and Alison for Pat. With Tom for his brother Mike, who's recovering from triple bypass surgery. And with them, all those for whom, for whatever reason, this Advent season is not the most wonderful time of the year. 
taking a moment in silence to name before you those close to us and known to us who particularly need to know your presence at this time. May they know your deep peace this Christmas season. God of mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray with those who now rejoice in God's presence, that one day we may come with them to the fullness of God's reign. Thinking too of all who grieve the passing of loved ones, and especially at this time, those who grieve for the Reverend Doug Watson. Those who grieve for Bridget Mwara, especially the Reverend George Mwara, her brother and their family. Those who grieve for Sylvia Poulton, especially Charlotte and Martin, Steve and Diane. And those who grieve for Keyes Maxey, especially the Reverend Ruth Maxey, his daughter and their family. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for having brought us to the end of this day. Let our prayer arise before you, and may your blessing descend upon us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you wish, please join with me in saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This, I believe, is my last evening leading prayers on Facebook this side of Christmas. Um, and it's lucky that I had a couple of alternate versions of the Carol of the Bells queued up. Um, I've enjoyed finding different variations of it. Here is a wonderfully jazzy version played by uh, an ensemble of all of one instrument, the best instrument that there is, being of course the trombone. Um, and we'll play out with this. But let me wish you all joy and peace at Christmas when it comes and throughout the season.
about that, the Zeged Trombone Ensemble to play us out. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. Good night. Happy Christmas.